Hey folks, uh, another Nixos video here in number 49. We're going to race our terminal. Oh yeah. Um, this video is pretty unoriginal, uh, but I'm sure you've, if you're at all a programmer or, you know, a system administrator or whatever, I'm sure on YouTube, you've seen a bunch of videos where, where people add all kinds of fancy Google to their, to their terminal to make them look nice and do various things and whatever. Uh, this is just the the NixOS equivalent thereof. Uh, so it assumes you're using Home Manager and ZSH. If you're not, this will not work. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Power Level 10K. It, this is this is a, a ZH, ZHS prompt theme, sort of, uh, plus various niceties that fit in that theme, like the git status of the directory you're in and other things that I don't really use. It looks nice, though. This is what it looks like. Pull it up. It looks like that. And, you know, the, uh, if you CD to, it will, uh, it will show you the, the sort of get status of, of your stuff in here. Uh, you can watch this video here. There, there's, there will be a link in the description to this script, uh, that you can go, you can go click on to get all these, these URLs. Uh, this is a video that, Describe some of the features of power 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 level ten. So in my home manager ZSH config, how I got that installed was to add to my programs.zsh. You know, I have a bunch of other stuff in there, but then I also have an extra this thing here, which we'll, we will cause to be put there in our home manager configuration. But then the the meat of the thing is this Z plug enable true power level ten k thing. Um, there will be a link to my, uh, actual configuration in, in this script as well. So just go to the video description, click it, and you can, you can see how it's actually being done. This is just elided. So it's, it's a bit of a dance generating a, the right P10K ZSH file, uh, on other systems, you know, they're not managed by home manager usually. And. Because of that, you know, it's it's just a total imperative configuration. Somebody somebody uh, causes the plugin to be installed, and then they they run this p10k configure command. It's like so. And oops. configure, and right. So my first problem here is I've already done this, so I can't do it again. But I will temporarily disable my p10k.zsh file. We will redo that once I actually have this is going. I do not use Home Manager in a standalone version. I have it configured to be a NixOS module, so I actually have to run NixOS rebuild for which that Swinix thing that I just typed is a is an alias. So this will probably be the place where you start out at if you're using Z Shell. You will have set up your P10K inside of your home manager configuration in the plugins thing. And you'll type P10 configure, P10K configure. And it'll come up and you'll be able to answer all these questions. Yes, no, no. Uh, and I'm just I'm just gonna choose any of them because I don't I don't really care. I already have mine, but uh, Whatever, 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 whatever. Yes. It's from mood. Uh, sure. Verbose. Okay. This is the problem that you are going to run into when you uh, run this in a on a system that for which ZSH has been configured under Home Manager. And so all you, all you really need to do is press no here. And you will have, at that point, you'll have a P10K, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this file was generated by that process of P10K configure. It, you can choose all, whatever options you want out of that whole thing. But what I've done is I've moved, I, I generated it once. And I moved it to my Etsy 
Well, this is where I keep my, my NixOS configuration. Uh, NixOS. Uh, users. Christian. No, I think it's in. It's in here. And I, I've already done this. So I won't do it again. But it is inside there. My real one. And there it is. So I just moved it there. After I generate it, and then I can re-enable home file p10k sh bsh, and then I'll have my, my prompt back again. So that's how you get around the the um, assumption of you know totally unmanaged files on the on the part of the the guy you know the people who who are writing parallel 10k. Uh, and once you do that, you should have the, the little uh, Google's. So another nicety is uh, enabling fuzzy finding via FZF. Um, this is actually pretty pretty nifty. Uh, what it enables you to do is uh, the, the, that link right here, this this free code camp link here, is actually a much better uh, demonstration of this. But you can do something like uh, you know, if I want to edit a file and I don't exactly remember what it's what it's called, I can say star star tab here. And you know, I happen to be inside of a my home directory, which is enormous. Uh, but I could say something like um, script. Nope. I can say something like uh, like uh, text. <laughs> Let's say, let's say that's the one I wanted to wanted to edit. And there we go. You can you can sort of fuzzy find things inside there. Type multiple words and it'll find stuff within there that, that'll be put onto your path after the command you type. It's, it's really cool. Um, you can also do it with, with directory changing. So if you do CD, star star, something like that. And you know you want to go inside of um, a... Uh, Subdirectory in here, you could say, uh, let's see, OBS, yeah, something like that. And you'd get to, yeah, you know, whatever. It's pretty cool. Um, I find that actually much more helpful in a real world sense than the P10K thing, although the P10K thing is, is pretty helpful because of the Git integration. So in order to get that installed, you have to go into your home manager config and say, you know, something home.packages. Uh, this is this this FD thing, it's like a enhanced find. Uh, is kind of an unnamed dependency of FCF. Uh, so you just have to add it to your home packages thing in there. And then these two lines here, programs FES and enable, enable to enable ZSH integration, that should get you the rest of the way. And it should work exactly like you see it on that link up there, which is the demo. I also had to, oh, yeah, I also had to do this. This might be due to my configuration because I have a bunch of configuration in, in here that might stomp on the FCF default configuration, but I had to add this line here, this bind key, you know, tab character FCF completion here in order for that to, to work properly. Um, I have another thing that I just installed called Shell Genie, which is nominally sort of useful. I mean, it's um, it's like a little AI suggestions for shell, shell command. Yeah. So you can do something like that. Uh, you could have, you know, What's, what's an FMPEG command to turn MP4 into an anime, Jeff? Okay. I don't think that down... <laughs> I don't think that down thumbs is meant to be there, but I don't know. I don't know. It, uh, and it lets you choose, you know, lets you choose whether you want to run the command or not. I think it's probably... I mean, I'm actually using a back end offered by the developer himself, which is free. You can also use, you can also choose to use chat GPT, which, but I don't have a subscription to, so I can't use their API, but uh, I don't know if it would be any better if it was chat GPT, but it, you know, it's, you know, even, even like for dumb stuff, like uh, find all the files in this directory greater, oops, and 50 megabytes. 
Yeah, I mean, that's right. That's actually right. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you just don't have to go look at a man page and tab through it or whatever. It's, it's, it, it, I guess it's pretty useful. It's pretty useful. So the way you get this is you just add your home package shell genie, but then after you uh, rebuild, just, you have to do shell genie in it, and it will ask you, you know, the back end and... I, I use this free genie thing. And uh, yes, not at the moment. Yes. No. That's how you get it configured for the first time you run it. You have to do that. So that's another rice. Um, this isn't strictly a rice. It's just that I've used, I used bash for a long time before I used Z shell. And some of the behaviors of bash or Z shell um, although the scripting language is, I think, entirely compatible. I don't think there's any difference, to be honest with you. Uh, the interactive mode, when you're at a prompt, is a little bit different. And I, I, I'm almost, don't even know if I remember exactly what all these things do, but I think this interactive comments thing, in normal Z shell, if you, if you type something like, something like that, and hit enter, it, it tries to, it tries to interpret the, the um the hash character as a as a you know part of the file name of tar and it, it it you know it doesn't consider a comment so that that turns on interactive comments like which is more like bash i think this bash auto list thing is when you do tab something like that i think that's it. under under z shell it's slightly different uh no beep i don't i guess it just turns off some sort of beep I guess these and these other things are, or they're all interactive things. They have nothing to do with the actual language itself. They're they're it just makes it more like Bash. I think I think that's all I have for racing at the moment. If you have something to uh, share that was useful in the terminal, uh, please let me know, and I hope this helps somebody. Thanks.